Hi, I'm George, and we'll be doing this sparkle text effect. And this is based on a project that I originally did back in Photoshop CS6, and I've updated this project now so that it works properly in Photoshop CC. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, take a look at my channel for a bunch more Photoshop videos, and let's go ahead and start this project. Let's start with a brand new file. I'll just get this out of the way. And then file, come down to new, and in here, I'm going to be using one that's set at 6 by 4, and it's horizontal right there. 6 inches by 4 inches horizontal, and choose Create. And there we go. Now, the first thing we want to do is to put a pattern in here. And this is one of the things that has to be changed or updated here for this to work with Photoshop CC. And that's because Photoshop recently redid how all the patterns are done. You have a, a lot of great new patterns. I love some of the new stuff, but the old patterns have been hidden. Let me show you what to do first. Go up here to Window, and then come down to Patterns. It's right here. And you can see here I have a whole bunch of these, these legacy patterns. I'm just going to delete this, just delete that group, and I'll show you where to get that. Okay, we're in our Patterns right here. Click on that icon right there, just a little icon. Come down where it says Legacy Patterns and More. Click on that. That loads all the old patterns back into the Patterns dialog box. As soon as that's done, I'll show you where you'll find the correct pattern for this. There we go. Let's open that up. And you want the bottom one that says Legacy Patterns. And then below that, way down here, we have one that just says Patterns right there. And inside of here, we have that proper pattern right there. And it's just called Metal Landscape. Okay, we have that set up. Now let's go ahead and close this. We're we'll doing a fill in here. So I'll go over here. I'm going to reset my colors to the defaults. There we go. And then let's go up here and grab the paint bucket right there. Set this to Pattern. And now we have our legacy patterns and more. We can go over here and then find that one. Again, this legacy patterns. Scroll down, look for just patterns right there. And the one that you want is right here. And that's our middle landscape. And then just click in to fill that. There we are. Now let's kind of, we're just kind of repeating real grid patterns showing up on this. We need to solve that grid pattern problem. And that's easy to do. Just right click over here where it says background and choose duplicate layer. And choose OK. There we go. And let's mess this up with the liquify filter. So filter, come down here to liquify right there. There we go. Now choose anything you want. I'll just use the regular forward warp tool, the standard tool right here. And I have my brush size set at something large. I'll do it at 500. And I'm just going to go through and just kind of pull things around a bit like this. Not too much, just little pulls. I just want to get it so I'm no longer seeing that grid pattern. And just do, you know, different directions. And just kind of mess things up. You can use any tool you want for this but it isn't really a real detailed step at this point. Now make sure if you pull off the edge like that, go back in and push it up so it goes beyond that edge. You want to have this clear to the edge. And just work your way clear around and just getting a basic messed up, changed up pattern in here so we no longer see that grid pattern. And that's pretty good. That's all you really have to do. Looks fine. And then choose OK. okay we now have two layers, one all messed up and the one underneath is the grid pattern layer. Let's now blend these two together. Right here it says normal. Let's set this at darken. And that looks great. Any little bit of grid showing at this point won't matter because it's going to be inside the letters and you won't see it. Let's now merge these two layers together. Just select both of our layers, right click, and they're going to be merging layers. There we go. And then double click where it says background and choose OK, making this into just a regular layer instead of a background layer. Let's now put in a new fill layer. So layer, come down to fill layer, Solid color, choose OK. And then I have mine set of black. If it's up here someplace, just pull down to the bottom left hand corner to get a pure black and choose OK. There we go. Now take this and pull it underneath the texture layer. That's why we changed that to layer zero instead of background. So we can put this layer underneath it. You can then hide that layer. There we go, looks good. Okay, now we're going to add in our text. Go to the type tool and then set the type color here to white. Click in here someplace, pull the upper left hand corner, choose OK. There's white. Let's set the text size here at 96. I have mine set at Cooper Black right there. It's a standard typeface. You should have that on your system. And it's at regular. Okay. Click in here someplace over left hand side and just type in sparkle. There we go. And let's get this positioned properly in here. Kind of centered like that. Now I also have mine set up to be giving me italic text. So if you don't have that, Easy to do, triple click on your text, go to Window, come down to Character Styles, right here, and in your styles, you wanna make a new character style. There we go, open that one up. 
and right here you'll find faux italic right there and choose OK. So that gives you your italic text. Now you can use any text you want for this particular project, but it should be a good thick typeface like this so you can actually see the texture inside of the typeface. I kind of like the rounded letters for this, but anything really works out just fine. Just a lot of space inside to get that texture in there. Let's now duplicate this layer. Right click where the name is and choose duplicate layer. Choose OK. Pull that above that texture and then just hide that one. There we go. Let's now come back down to our texture layer right here. And we're going to make this into a clipping mask. So right click on the name and then create clipping mask. That puts that texture inside of the letters. Looks fine. Let's now give this the proper color. And for that, we'll use an adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer. You want hue saturation right there. Choose OK. And here's the adjustments up here in the properties panel. Now click on colorize. And then on hue, let's set this to 206. In saturation, set this to 62. And we'll leave the lightness at zero. And there's the basic coloration for that. Let's now hide that layer and hide that adjustment. There we go. Go back up to our top layer right here. And let's hide that background as well. So it's just white lettering on a background, clear background. Let's now go up to layer, come down to layer style. And you want to have stroke right there. And in here, there's our basic stroke setting. I have my set at 16 pixels. And the position is outside blend mode normal opacity 100. It just makes a nice thick black border like that. Choose OK. Now I need to rasterize this layer, so right click. I'm going to rasterize layer style. There we go. Just converts that whole thing into one layer with no layer style on it. Let's now get rid of the white inside. And for that, we use the magic wand right there. Then I have mine set up here at a point sample. And it's not set for contiguous, unchecked contiguous. It's not anti-aliased. Then just click inside one of those. And that selects all that white area inside the letters. And then just hit the delete key to delete that out and then deselect. So there we go, we just have an outline now for the lettering. Now I want to put a gradient onto this. And for that, let's also go back and bring in another gradient. So window, come down to gradients this time. And in here, little icon right there, come down to legacy gradients. And there we go, they're now showing. We can close that down. Let's now go over to our gradient tool. It's right over here, gradient tool. Click on our gradient up here, scroll down. There's the legacy gradients. Open that one up, and then come down here to metals right there. And you want this one, it's called silver, just kind of gray and white. There we go, looks good. And I have mine set here to reflected. Okay, that's ready. Now let's go back down here to our layer, hold the control key down, click on the thumbnail, and that selects all the contents of that layer, which in this case is just that outline, and then pull that gradient straight across. There we go. And it puts in this kind of nice gray to light to gray kind of a gradient happening and then deselect that there we go we can now bring back our other layers let's bring back our text right here and bring back our background bring back our hue saturation and there we go there is the basic look for this let's now put our sparkles on top of this and for that you want a new layer click on a new layer button right down here there's our new layer and for this we also need to have some new brushes up here so window come down to brushes right here I have my legacy brushes already showing. Let me show you where you can find those. And that's up here, little icon again, and click on legacy brushes right there. And that adds that onto our list. So we're bringing back basically all the old stuff which has been hidden, so we can then access that again. Okay, have our legacy brushes. Let's just set our foreground color here to white, grab our brush, and then up here, just go clear to the top so you can see this. Here's the regular brushes. Come down where it says legacy brushes right here. And then inside of that, go to assorted brushes right there. And then come down until you see way down here, starburst small right there. Grab that one. It's a 50 pixel. It changes to 75 pixels right there. That's all set. If I just do one right here, see how it's kind of real small and dim? Let's undo that control Z. If you click five or seven times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it gets a lot brighter like that. And just undo that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get rid of that. There we go. That's our trick right down here. We're now going to be putting in these small. You want five to seven per letter. Let's put in a few of these. I'll do five right here. Let's do seven over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then over here. I'll do one right down here someplace. Just clicking a few times. I'll do the first two letters here. And then I'll just pause the video for a second and fill in the rest. 
You can just click it several times until you get a nice little bright star happening. You want to have some of these overlapping on the outside end of that black area right on the edge like that. So the middle of our starburst is always on the edge or inside. And then put a few inside and put a few on the edges. There we go. We'll be adding in some larger ones here in just a moment. Okay, that's the basic thing. Again, you want to have five to seven per letter and click it about five to seven times per starburst. All right, I'm going to pause the video just for a second and I'll finish this stage. We'll then come back on and do the large starbursts. Okay, there we go. There's all the small ones. Let's now change the brush size right up here. Change it up to 200. So pretty good size. Now this won't take as many clicks to get a nice bright star. And I'll put a few of these just right on top of some of these other ones. Like one, two, three is pretty good right there. And I'll do one, two right here. Let's come down here and do one, two, three right there. I'll go up right here, I'll do four real bright one right there. And over in here, one, two clicks in here. And then one, two, three right there. So this takes fewer clicks to get a nice bright sparkle. And then just put a few of these around. There we are. And then one, I think, right here. There we go. Okay, there's all the sparkle effect in there. Looks good. Now we need to put in some interesting stuff in the background. And for that, we're going to be using a standard lens flare. So let's come down here to our background layer right here. Right click on that and you want to duplicate that layer. Choose OK. There we go. Right click again. Let's just rasterize that layer. So it's just solid black. There we go. OK, now go to filter and then come down to render right here and lens flare. And we'll be using the default lens flare. I'm just kind of eyeballing it so it's in behind the P someplace. And that's a little ways in from the left hand side like that. And it's kind of in the middle. So somewhere right around in here someplace is pretty good. And the brightness is set at 100 and choose OK. It just puts it in behind like that. Notice how it's being colored up here by our hue saturation layer right there. So it has a nice blue color already matching because we're using the same hue saturation as our lettering in here. So that's nice. Now we can take this and move it around a little bit like that. I'll put it right up here. See that bright part? Put the bright part right back in here. So it comes right back in that area right there. Now using the control T keyboard shortcut, let's bring up our options up here and change the angle here to 15. Just a little bit of a spin on that and I'll bring that down again so it's in behind and that looks pretty good right there. Now we're seeing off the edges up here, we want to fix that. So grab the magnifying tool right here and let's just zoom out a little bit on this. That's probably enough right here. Back to our control T so we can get our control handles. And pull the corners out so we don't have anything showing around the edges. That's pretty good up here. That's clean. It's clean over here. That's a good size. Hit that check mark and that's all set in place. Okay, let's go back to fit on screen. I'll just go up here to view and fit on screen. And you can move this around until it fits in nice. Just keep a watch on those edges. And I think right in there is pretty good. Nice clean edges there and the bottom. There it is. Okay, last little trick in here. And let's put a little drop shadow on the border that we have on this. Let's go back up to our border layer. That's right here. It says sparkle copy. Up to layer. Come down to layer style. And this is going to be a drop shadow right there. There we are. Blend mode at multiply. Opacity at 50%. These are defaults. Let's change our angle over here to, I like around 130, 120 in there somewhere. There's 139, 135. That's a nice little angle. Distance I have just a little ways out at 6 zero spread and size at 7px. Just a nice little drop shadow happening in there. Let's go ahead and preview that. I'll put this over here so you can see that. There's without and there's with that drop shadow. Which is okay. And there we go. There is the sparkle text effect updated here for the current version of Photoshop CC. And if you like this video, hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe. Check out my channel for a bunch more videos and I'll see you next time.